again. Let's hook it up. Let's hook it up. Let's hook it up. Yeah. What do we got here? We got some bait on the bottom, it looks like. I'm here by a buoy. I'm gonna show you something right here. <clears throat> This right here is pretty awesome. I can put this trolling motor down, turn it on, and I take this right here, this Minn Kota has a uh, spot lock feature, and then just give that a second to kick on, and then I can do this here, see this? anchor that sets a gps location on, hold on why didn't it do it there we go it's a gps location on where i marked this fish at so this motor will hold me over the fish so i can catch some bait a lot easier going over a uh, structure i marked a while back going over to see if i can't pick up a king or something another loop on that and see what happens. I'll try a loop around this thing. Like just drive a circle. A lot of stuff down there. this bad boy again with a wire leader circle hook hook them through the nostrils they stay alive a lot longer that way I'm just gonna take this thing and I'm going to just line it up there see if we can't pick up a king a little bit. I need to get my running right now. And let's hook it up. Let's hook it up. Let's hook it up. Yeah. What do we got here? on it. Not running. Jumped a couple times. What's 
we have? Oh, it's a nice dolphin. Hopefully I won't lose this thing. Nice big dolphin on a spinner rod. I have a 15 pound braid on here. And then I have about four feet of monofilament leader. I feel like there's another fish with this one. It looks like there's something else here. It's hard to tell from where I'm at, but. Nice, Mahi. dolphin I've ever caught on a spinning rod and it took like 20 seconds for it to hook up Such a pretty fish. Uh. Woo! Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Awesome. <laughs> that was exhilarating. For sure. I wish I wasn't alone right now. Circle, it didn't even matter. It swallowed the whole thing. It was hungry. <laughs> what a pretty fish. Check that out, man. That is amazing. Woo. Gonna go back to the house, go ahead and cook something up, taste it. So, 
Gonna clean this mahi we caught today. Take this here. Got a dorsal fin right here. Take this. Feel where the uh, soft part of the uh, flesh is here. And then here's a bone for the head. So you can just go ahead and outline that. Outlining the fish. Sometimes you gotta get a little of that slime off there. Especially if you wanna grab that skin and feel it. Peeling right off. Grab that. Peel that skin right off of there. It's like not barely any meat left on the skin. Some people like to do it that way. times until you get to the backbone you can see this backbone has it's a very big backbone it's good just barely up and over that I'm gonna follow that line right there. You can see that where that bloodline is. Just follow that straight through. Down to the backbone. Take these. Run it. Underneath here, get those bones, pin bones, release those. There you go. First part of the mahi flay. Try to do it this way here. I've never done it this way. Usually, just usually I do a regular fillet, but I'm gonna follow it like it would be the top of the fillet. See how it turns out. Okay. I want to get into the guts there, so I'll start back down this side. Again, following that backbone. Stay on top of the ribs if you can. Let's 
the other part of it. Pretty nice filet. Anybody know if you can eat mahi eggs? I know certain types of fish, like the uh, gar pike down here in Florida. You're not supposed to eat the eggs out of them. They're actually toxic. But that's a lot of eggs in there. I know up north, trout eggs are actually very good. Anybody knows? Leave a comment. Tell me what you, uh, how you cook them, how you do any of that stuff. Little cucumber. There you go. Some tomato. Cilantro and a lime. A little salt. A little pepper. A little chili powder. A little more than that, probably. I'll be out. I don't know. Oh man. Cumin? Yes, it's called cumin. A little apple cider vinegar. Apple cider. A little apple cider vinegar. Who are you? Well, that's all you put in there? Yeah. Just enough to tang it up. Glad I bought two bottles of that. And stuff. we're gonna use it. <laughs> a little brown sugar, just to sweeten it barely. Like that much. Uh. It's an additive. There you go. No. Give this a little stir. How's it smell? It smell pretty good? Yes. It smells awesome. So you let that marinate for a little bit. And then we'll take some red cabbage. Toot. <laughs> Don't toot in it, we'll please. We'll take this and we'll <laughs> choose some cracked pepper, black pepper. And then, of course, more salt. A little bit of garlic powder. And then we take a little more apple cider vinegar. Jizzle that on there. You lick your hands and start massaging the well, cabbage. No licky. Mm. This smells like feet. Yes. But it tastes delicious. How's it? Is it good? Yummy. So this is our uh Red cabbage uh, slaw, pretty simple. Put that over there. Some black pepper. A little salt. A little garlic powder. A little onion powder. And then last. Most important, this uh, red fish seasoning. Whoa. It's important to be generous with this because we're going to blacken this in the pan and some of that's going to actually come off there. Do that and we'll do that to the other side and then we'll cook it. Two pans going. We're doing one for tortillas and one for the fish. Got uh, a little bit of oil in there heating up right now, but we're gonna add a little more to this because we wanna basically cover those tortillas as we're cooking them. Add a little more to that too, just to 
a nice bed of oil. Got to make sure that oil is really hot. Get that pan thoroughly heated first. And we recommend when you're doing this to cover your granite with a towel because it'll spatter everywhere. Normally I would do this outside, but I don't feel like it's dark and the mosquitoes It's are almost nine o'clock. Good to eat late sometimes. No, it's not. I think that's almost ready. Not quite. Put that over there. Tortilla, chin, put it in there, roll it around a little bit. Like that. We use corn tortillas. I like to flip it before it completely browns on that side. Nice and sizzling. It's ready yet. Not quite yet. The bigger pan takes a lot longer to heat up. It's starting to get brown. Nice. Right there. Just a little bit of smoke rolling off of that. Right. Throw in the first little bit of fish. thing is looking pretty good here. Crispy. What I like to do, take you put a cup right there. Take that tortilla. Get the grease off of it. Oh, it'll probably good for now, but <laughs> I'll stand it up here in a second. A cup will help keep it up. Roll that around a little bit. This is looking pretty good. Two cups of water. Take that tortilla, stand it up, and the grease will run off of it. Tortillas here. We're gonna make ourselves a little uh, tostada, and we're gonna take a piece of this fish here. Which one looks good to you? This one. They all look good. Here, take that one here. Put that on there like that. And we'll take. Yeah. Right. Never prepared. We'll take this. Got some salsa there. Take it. Some uh, this little cabbage here that on here <laughs> like that oh yeah and then we'll take a little of this salsa and put that right on top of there like that I think with mine I'm gonna break up my fish a little bit okay take that right there like that so this mm. yeah so we got a nice little Fish torta, to, tortada? Blah. Fish to, tostada. Tostada. Look at that. Amazing, huh? I even got the fish up. It's already good, though. This is awesome. It's a awesome, like, blackened fish flavor. 
the uh, cabbage and all that. It's got a nice vinegary, like kind of a tang sour to it. And then the salsa, sweet, tangy, all kinds of awesome flavors going on. Definitely a good combination. <laughs>